So this time I will talk about recent research, uh, about recent concept of total positivity. It has been around for a while, and I think it deserves a place uh, both in this community but also here one in the uh, models. And I think, and I hope I can uh, make it interesting also to you. So, so I have the subtitle of the lecture. Uh, your dreams all come true with MTP2. Uh, MTP2 essentially has this property, as I will show you, that, that all the counterexamples you can think of are the things that go wrong, do not go wrong when you have MTP2. And uh, I'll try to persuade you that this is an interesting concept and that it will, and I think you will hear more about it in the future. So here is a uh, Brief overview over of my plan. I'll just talk a little about positive association and the fundamental definition of uh, multivariate total loop and positivity. I'll just uh, spend a little while on multivariate Gaussian distributions because it's particularly simple. Uh, and then I will go over to discuss uh, conditional dependence and how conditional dependence uh, and Markov properties play, uh, play together with the uh, sort of positivity. Uh, and that would be uh, describing particular properties of totally positive Markov distributions, and, and I will then do some special instances of the last. So, so here is the uh, first the idea, and the thing that every statistician worries about. I'm not sure the UAI people worry about it, because in a certain sense, this is a good thing for, for the AI thing, but still, so let us have, there's something called the Simpson paradox, or Hugh Simpson paradox. And it's, the point is that positive association can turn negative. And first of all, what does it mean that two random variables are positive, positively associated, and because they're real value, it means that if you take increasing functions or not increasing functions, it always has a non-negative covariance. Uh, now sometimes, which is the human sense of paradox, you can have this x and y, and they're positively associated, but suddenly, when you condition on the third variable, z, uh, they become negatively associated. And that has been known as a paradox, I think, in the human sense of paradox, but it's, of course, a fundamental property of uncertain reasoning that these things should have. Still, it is a big interest to know when they do not have, because life can be much simpler than that. So here's a, a classic example, a very old example of uh, 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 the other cases in Freud where the question is, is there any uh, uh, relation or is there any association between the color of, in this case, uh, the, uh, the color of the, it was the, of the, the race of the ethnicity, if you like, of the, uh, of the murderer, then these all murderers that have been in court in Florida. And there are 4,863 murder cases in the five year period, which is quite a lot. And so, if you count how many of them will be sentenced to death, you will see that the proportion of uh, white murderers that are sentenced to death 
is actually a little higher than that of the black murderers. So that suggests that everything is fine. There's a positive association between being, black, being white and being sentenced to death. However, if you control of the victim, it's really a very different picture. You see, never ever has a white man been sentenced to death for killing uh, uh, an Afro American victim. And so, so here, here the, again, the again is a huge uh, higher rate for the uh, uh, for, for, for the uh, Afro American community that have been uh, which is, so that and then this is what is known as Simpson's paradox. So when you look at it in one way, it looks fine. When you look at it in a different way, it completely turns things around. Uh, and. And the point is, we now need to know, we have, what we need to understand and to work with is when something is really positive associated in such a way that the positive association never goes away. You can also think of starting having the idea that this is related to some sort of causality. If you have an association that between two things and it stays positively associated no matter what circumstances you're in then you might think that there might actually be a causal explanation of that uh, uh, association. So here's the fundamental definition of, uh, uh, of the multivariate positivity. You simply, there's this notion of multivariate positive of order two, totally positive of order two, m g to two in short. It is uh, said that to take two values of the density function, of the, of the function, and you multiply them together, and you take now maximum and minimum of the uh, function and multiply them together, you get something bigger. So the two values at the corners, uh, if you look at it this way, if you product these two at the corners, the higher and the lower, you get a bigger value than if you take the least one and multiply them together. This is, sounds a bit uh, uh, it's known as total positivity and TB2 in the bivariate case, but now we're talking about multivariate. The max and min are, are called them by things. And, and we just, I just recall, I know for other reasons, and I'm going to use it later, uh, that you would be familiar, probably many of you are familiar with supermodularity. So that function is supermodular, means that if you take the minimum of the max and them, you get something bigger than just adding the x and the y. And then you can see that actually multivariate total mcp2 is the same to say that the, the exponent, that the log of the function f is supermodular. So you can either say log supermodular or you can say mcp2 is the same thing. And, uh, and, that, and I'm just I'm convinced you that this is an interesting object. So, so here's just a small example. If you just look at a two-dimensional case, which is a bivariate case, you have x1, x2, and y1, and y2. So if you multiply these two values, suppose x2 is the largest, and y2 is the largest, then this product should be smaller than that product. And in other words, and this is the same as saying that a certain determinant is non-negative. And this really means that if you take sort of any four values that go together like max, min, and two pairs, and you take the corresponding determinant, and that determinant will be positive. It's very simple as a right condition, uh, and, and it is somehow astonishing how much you can uh, get from that. For distributions, we have to think of uh, multivariate total positivity as we look at density functions, and we would look at uh, sort of what we call a standard base measure, which is either, if it's a discrete variable, we call it we would use counter measure and otherwise the bit measure. So uh, the distribution is then multivariate until we cause the order two if the density is. So that's the definition. This this is has been studied in some detail by Cardinal Minot in 1980. There's a book by Cardinal on multivariate total uh, on total positivity, which is for the bivariate case, but in this generalization to the multivariate case from 1980. Uh, and, and the interesting things when using this uh, concept it comes down from what is known as the FKG inequality for between Catholic and uh, Geneva, which is classic in, uh, 
in uh, statistical physics. Uh, and, and instead of saying the distribution is x tends to be two, I just say x is empty. So, so let's just see what for the Gaussian case, what does that mean? Uh, in the Gaussian case, we had a covariance matrix, so uh, with sigma x, sigma y. So, so you can see what I claim is that this product is the same as saying that the covariance is non negative. So, this is, in that sense, it generalizes a very obvious result. Uh, and you can simply see if you write the mixed terms in the exponents uh, of the densities, uh, the quadratic terms go away, these are the mixed terms. Uh, one, one of them looks like this, the other one looks like that, and then you can see that this is if, if sigma is positive, uh, you can you can uh, divide the set and you can only uh, this uh, difference is is positive, and that's really x two minus x one and y two minus y one. So again, this is this is a uh, simple explanation for the Gaussian case. In the binary case. Uh, we can show that very easily that uh, an empty distribution is simply one where the odds ratio is positive. So, in the binary case, in the Gaussian case, in the binary case, this empty V2 property is simply just a positive association. Uh, even if you go to conditional distributions, you would see again the conditional odds ratios will also satisfy this uh, property of having a conditional. And this means that in effect there will be no new sense of paradox for MCD2 distributions. So that's an important sort of uh, motivation for everyone. Now, are they there or are they common such distributions? It's a very strong assumption that all associations are positive and all positive, but actually there are a huge number of examples that are MCD2. Some of them are classic statistics. Which are sort of things like the eigenvalues or the characteristic rules of which are matrices. But I think in particular, one that would interest this community is any ferromagnetic easy model. So that is models with binary models with pairwise associations, and if all the pairwise associations are non negative, that's called an attractive uh, easy model, and such models are always empty. Uh, that are much very logistic, there's something called Gaussian free fields, uh, any Markov chain which has transition density. If there's a tendency in the Markov chain that when you move from one point to the next point, you sort of uh, have a positive association between two time points, then it will have all over the place uh, you can be positive. And the order statistics, if you take any much very density, that these are also classic statistical things. And again, that's something again that any later tree one, actually, uh, in particular the Gaussian ones, but I'll show you later the other later tree ones uh, occur in the same way. So the ones you find, for example, in phylogenetics, they're also empty. So although it's a, it's a rare thing, it's very strong restrictions, there are many cases that appear where this empty restriction is and could be relevant. Essentially, you have to think of multivariate distributions where every measurement you make or every variable you are associated with are somehow both pos they're positively associated with each other, all of them. They're all sort of uh, ways in which uh, uh, they're somehow measuring the same thing uh, as a latent uh, time model, or they are, or, or they are and in, in any such case, it actually gets quite. Uh, and so I can give many other examples, but that would fill my words well. First of all, there's a lot of stuff that is true for MCD2 that is not true for others. There's a huge collection of inequalities that I shall not give you here, but they are very well studied in the literature. So, uh, so, you, so the current read on paper is uh, a fantastic paper, and that is almost everything. Know about it, but not, not everything. Uh, it's, it has an interesting property that is quite well preserved on the various other operations. For example, suppose you have a multivariate distribution and you take the marginal to a smaller subset. 
<laughs> of error. So that means, say, that you are, uh, so you, you can say some of the some of the other variants are native, there are latent. It's a complex system with latent variants, you just take a subset of them. If the original distribution is MTP2, then the margin is MTP2. Uh, similarly, if you take the conditional distribution, anything, so if you make any, if you sort of start with a multivariate model and then you want to do what a machine learning and you I would call inference, compute conditional distribution skill, something you have seen, then MTP2 is preserved. Uh, if you take any discrete variables, say you, know, you have states 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you start collapsing states so that neighboring states work, instead of you have your coarsening the state spaces. If you do coarsening on the state spaces in the right way, so you preserve the ordering, the MCP2 is preserved. And, and finally, take any non decreasing transformation of all the variables. Uh, so, so for every variable you take a transformation, you Compute something else, it remains empty. So this is a, uh, this has all been known. This is a process that has been known, but it's quite important for the interpretation and the manipulation and of empty distributions. Uh, finally, there's this one. Uh, you know that Gaussian variables have the property that you have independence even only if you have the covariance equal to zero. Now, this is true for MTP2 distribution as well. Uh, so actually, you can, you, can, you can see that, that the correct, correct, sorry, the correct is always positive. This is what I told you. I'm mixing up the next over here. This, and this is the, the thing that was true by Fulton and that, that this supermodular, not supermodular, so the density box requires positive association. Uh, but, but you have the other way around. You have independence of variables if and only if the covariance is zero. So this means uh, that, which is otherwise only true for the Gaussian distribution. So take any distribution whatsoever. If it's MTP2, you can check independence just looking at the covariances. Now this can be quite uh, Important for any kind of structural learning, if you want to do structural learning of any kind, uh, you will be able to have uh, to actually look at the covariances and infer quite a lot about uh, the distribution and the associations just based on the covariances, which, of course, computationally has the potential of making uh, fast analysis possible. For a multivariate Gaussian, it's a very simple uh, condition. The condition is simply that the inverse of the covariance, which is the concentration gradient, always have non negative interest outside the diagonal. So this is known as, a, as called a post matrix or an M matrix, so that every little uh, off diagonal element in the Gaussian should be uh, non positive. It's allowed to be zero, but it should be non positive. Uh, so this is again a very simple characterization of, of MTP2, and this goes a little further back, but not much further, uh, a, little, a, a little more recent than the original paper, but not much, it has been known for a long time. It may not have quite been destroyed as it is. So, so you can see that in a different way of saying that MTP2 for a Gaussian distribution, this says, because every Inverse element is just a negative of the, it's a scale negative of the partial correlation. So it just says all partial correlations should be non negative. So essentially, now knowing that things are now close on the marginals, not the conditioning, we see that it means that partial correlations of all orders are non negative, if and only if the full partial correlation is non negative. So even if, even if I take a marginal, I know because MCB2 is. Is uh, preserved on the margin is not negative. It's also a complex restriction in K. So because of that convexity restriction, you can use such a restriction in in, uh, in learning algorithms where complex optimization can be used. So in that sense, uh, so, so this was sort of all 
read on the student and uh, things, and now let's just see what happens if we. So this is the mathematics box, uh, which is a sort of a standard graphical model example uh, in multivariate. I'm just showing you because it's an obvious MTP2 situation. So you're measuring the, the mathematics box for five mathematical subjects for all the, the kids and. This is at Leeds University, I know it's Kansas Media, sorry, Holland University, and Kansas Media was a teacher there, he collected this data. So we have five mathematical subjects, you have the marks out of 100, and of course, there's a natural positive, positive association between mathematics marks. So that if you, if, if you're good at one subject in mathematics, you tend to be good at another. Uh, so, in that sense, it makes sense to say that the association is positive. It's not a completely ridiculous example of that. And you can see if just compute the empirical partial correlations, uh, which are done here, you can see that, that, that the only empirical partial correlation, this is actually so small, right, that it doesn't really uh, uh, matter. And if you simply think, if you it's a set, so it's really it's almost empty two. And if you actually fit under the empty two constriction, you get this sort of standard model that you get in any modulated method. So empty fitting under empty two constraints uh, actually does yield sparsity on its own. Now, so much for just motivating and showing you examples of where such empty two things can be quite reasonable. So let's just see what does it do to conditional dependence. And let me just remind you about uh, the abstract condition of dependence theory as it has now been developed by, by many people, uh, starting with Julia Perot. Uh, and uh, I guess Milan Student is uh, my Bible, the student book from 1925. It has, uh, then you have these in independence form, which is a ternary relation over subsets on a finite set. And a semi graphoid, it satisfies symmetry, decomposition, weak union, and contraction, which are standard properties of condition dependent. You should read A is condition dependent of E given C. And it's true that any, any probabilistic independence model, if these are generated by any probability distribution, then they automatically become semi graphoid. Uh, and and sometimes we really want the graphoids. The graphoids actually uh, satisfy the same one, but also this section action, which generally demands something like, not necessarily exactly that, but demands something like the density of n being strictly positive. So let's just, for the moment, consider densities that are strictly positive, and then we know that the corresponding independence model is a graphoid in this sense satisfies all these properties. Now, what happens if it's also empty uh, So, just say again, well, it probably is the intended model. Every time I have a distribution for a joint set of variables, it really means that A and B are conditionally transferred to the next, meaning the corresponding random variables are. So here's now an independence model that is empty B2. And it satisfies a lot of other properties. First of all, it satisfies composition. This is true for the Gaussian case in general, but otherwise it's really true for probability. But any MTP2 distribution satisfies composition. Any MTP2 satisfies what we call symmetry transitivity, uh, essentially saying that you can't. The same can't have conditional dependence in more than one. If, if actually you and me are conditional dependent given C and they're also conditional dependent given something else, then that something else must either be uh, either it's independent of U given C or it's independent of V given C. This, this property can be quite important for certain types of learning algorithms uh, of the PCI algorithm type. Uh, and finally, it does this. Uh, upward stability, every time you condition with something more, uh, you, uh, every time you condition with something more, so if you 
have a condition of dependence and you make it further conditioning, it remains a condition of dependence. This is a bit like no Simpson paradoxes, right? So that an association cannot suddenly change sign. Uh, but also, if it's the association is gone, it remains gone when we condition. Which is a very, again, very strong. It's a very strong property, but notice that if we take standard separation in non directed graph, it satisfies all these. So, generally, what is the, what is the, what is the uh, trick with the graph here? The trick with graph here is you have this beautiful picture of the graph. And then you think this graph is a really good picture of the independent structure of the probability distribution. So the graph, you have this idea that the graph and the probability distribution have the same independences, so you just check the independences by looking at the graph. This is not always true, however. Uh, because the graph has said, you know, the graph satisfies these things. If, if there is no path from A to B, unless those that go if A is separated by B, then by C, from B given C, and if A is separated from B given C, it's clearly separated from the union. <coughs> at some point, we will use that without, as if it was a true failure problem, especially without thinking of it, but, uh, uh, but that has been corrected. Uh, and it also satisfies this that, that if you can have separation in this way, if not, it has to be separated by on one side or the other side. And similarly, if you have something that's separated by a certain set, it all is separated by a larger set. <coughs> so undirected graphs actually satisfy this. And any MC2 distribution is satisfied. Now this is, this is a very strong uh, statement. And of course, it tells us that MC2 restriction is a very strong restriction. This uh, reference, which floats around all the time, is reference to the paper that that this is based on, which is on the archive, and uh, it is to appear in the Annals of Statistics. And it's high. I have, uh, it is accepted. I have actually have proofs uh, uh, at it many times, so I don't know if it will come out. Uh, but it's on the uh, it's on the archive. So the question is now, because of this picture. Can we say something about the Markov structure and the independent structure for MC2 distributions? And, uh, and can. So let's just recall a couple of concepts. Uh, the pairwise independence graph uh, of, a, uh, of a distribution is simply saying that you, every time you have two uh, variables, they're not adjacent if the two variables are independent given the remaining variables. So this is a pairwise, this is an undirected graph, and it's a pairwise dependent graph, and of course, any distribution is pairwise part of with respect to this graph. So since it is the, uh, the smallest graph such that it is pairwise part of respect to that. So that's the, uh, that's the point. And, uh, and we say that it is globally marked for that every time we have a separation in the graph, we have a separation, we have a dependence. Uh, probability. And again, that is, this is of course where I'm going to, and this is, if you think of what happens in, on the previous slide, where I showed that MCV2 distribution satisfies all the properties of graphs, or a lot of properties that are shares of graphs, we say sometimes that distribution is faithful if, if, the, if it has the same condition of dependent structure as the graph. So, so every time you have separation in the graph, you have condition dependence, and vice versa. Now, if the distribution is faithful and has positive density, otherwise you have to be a bit careful. If it's faithful and you have positive density, then it is faithful. So, faithfulness is not an extra assumption, it follows from the MTP2. It's faithful to its pairwise independence graph. This fits with the uh, with this one, right? Saying that it, any MTP2 distribution satisfies these things. Uh, well, separation satisfies these things. So you can almost think that these eight actions, if you like, if you take 
as after x a is type, it actually just are the actions of separation in our direct class. Uh, I don't know whether this is right. Um, so pairwise dependence graph actually gives a complete picture of the gives a complete picture of the dependence structure. So this is so this is a, in, a, in a very advanced way, if you like, in a very beautiful way, the absence of the series of paradoxes. Right? You, you make this graph of the dependencies, the pairwise dependence graph, and you know, they're giving the full story about independences. This is a little bit like no series of paradoxes. So you, you can't sort of have associations that change sign or go away or uh, as when you make operations. They, they stay there no matter what you do. Uh, it, it should. Uh, it, it does say something which, which it, it may not be that popular in, in this community. Uh, is that very rarely, if you have a DAG uh, distribution, it, it is almost never MCG2. Well, and not almost never. It is uh, if all parents in the DAG uh, need to be uh, connected. So you must have a perfect thing. Because if it's faithful to a DAG, it's faithful to its pairwise independence graph, which means it's faithful to its moral graph, which means that it must be, uh, if it's faithful to a DAG and it's faithful to the moral graph, then the moral graph must be equal to the skeleton of the DAG, so all pairs must be parallel. And this is supposed to, in this case, you have quarter graphs. Uh, so, so so an MCG2 distribution will always that if, if it if it is if it is representable by a DAG, it's also representable by a non-DAG type. So uh, so it again shows how strict uh, the concept is. Now this of course, one is exploiting the non mtg 2 ness from time to time in AI when you want to have these phenomena of explaining away. So suddenly, you know certain things that the probability of something else go up or down exactly. They, they do change, and that is the property of probability. But sometimes you actually want this not to happen. And, uh, okay, now, what else can I say about forward graphs and total positivity? So quarter graphs are graphs uh, that where any uh, cycle that is longer than four has a chord, and they are directed graphs, and they correspond to graphs where the cliques can be arranged in a junction tree or joint tree. Uh, you like, I presume I don't have to explain that here in the URI community. Uh, and, and you can say, but could you actually check when a quarter graph is empty? Uh, unfortunately, this is not quite as beautiful as one would think. Uh, if, you have, if all the separators in the, the junction tree are singletons, so you can have a sort of a tree of triangles, if you like, that only, where only intersection of neighboring triangles are only intersecting in a single point, and that would be MCG2 if and only if the triangle marginals are MCG2. So, so therefore, MCG2 less. Uh, is uh, is can be checked by by just looking at the uh, at margin to the leaks. This is not necessary to uh, if you uh, uh, it does cover trees of course. So if you have a tree that is MTP2, then any then you just have to check MTP2 less by checking along the edges. Uh, it's easy to construct counter examples in the other one. So, so it's not something that is almost true. This is, you can do strange things to these pairwise uh, connections. This is true in the Gaussian case as well, so it has nothing to do with, with uh, being on Gauss. Uh, and, and this, I'm now returning to any time, any day tree model, if you have pairwise next to two, sorry, there's a misprint on the other end, too, too much. Too, too much. Uh, but if, if you take the tree models and on the tree, on the branches, or branches are MTV2, then any uh, tree model would be MTV2. So this is, 
if you like, a slightly more uh, because we know it's just on the margins as well, right? So, so that I started off by saying Gaussian like three models for uh, MCP2 uh, as phylogenetics, but is there any late variable model that is generated by an MCP2 tree is MCP2 itself. Uh, more precisely, you can say any, any model, it actually doesn't have to be a tree for that purpose. Suppose uh, that any distribution is made up by pair injections. So like an easy model, for example. Well, somebody would call this an easy model, but they don't have to be binary. That's the point. Uh, so take any positive function, and suppose that is just a normalized constant, the usual super zoomer. Uh, but but then <coughs> any distribution of this form is x to two if it only each factor is x to two. So again, if it's just a pairwise, if all interactions and all associations interactions between variables are pairwise, then x to be two this just means that each of these pairwise interactions are x to two. And that has nothing to do with causal or non causal or anything like that. that follows. So this of course Covers very much in easy blocks in the present case. So again, it turns to something that. Now, what happens if we have higher order interactions? If you have third order, fourth order, fifth order interactions, and you have complicated uh, distributions uh, in various ways, uh, it's a simple condition, and of course, there is. So, so let's just look at the standard of Oops, there's a P missing. This will be log the probability of X. Sorry about that. I check my own next slide. Yeah, there's a P missing. This would be the logarithm of the probability of X. P greater than X. And we expand that in interaction terms. So each of these functions only depend on X through uh, XD, through its projection of D. So it's just a standard log linear expansion of any probability. I just forgot to write the P there or something. Sorry about that. This is the disadvantage. You're the first year in this lecture, right? So this is the disadvantage of that, that are misprints like that. Sorry about that. Uh, I haven't talked about this before, and it's has to be. Uh, 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 there is a new, you can make it such an expansion in different ways, so we want to make it unique. So we assume that, that, that every uh, soft every space has a zero in it, and we just then say that fractions are zero and whenever there is one that is zero. This is just make the uh, representation unique uh, and it's a simple way of making it unique because you can draw a here. Uh, in the binary case uh, uh, you, can, you, don't need, you don't need x there because you just say uh, when every, every time everything is one you call it d to d and every time everything is zero if there's a zero there you, you just have a zero. So you just write d to d is simply uh, this d to d of one d. So it's a binary case that comes to the same one. But the uh, multi-state case uh, is a general expression. And see, we have to put this function uh, between any pair. We look at all the interactions terms and add them up for those that are bigger than that one. And then. And then there's a long story here, but essentially you have to take care, you have to look at a specific subset of space, but then you have to look at this function, and that has to be non-negative, non-degree, and supermodular. So it's a... Uh, and, and, and apart from that being a bit involved in statement, uh, I'm sorry about that, the important way that, that, that the important message of that proposition is that it's a polyhedral form. So, so this is the uh, because all these restrictions are uh, inequality, polyhedral inequality. So it comes to polyhedral form, and that gives certain properties to optimization that is not some choice. Uh, and also, of course, it does say that you have to. So essentially, you have to add up interactions from the pairwise and higher. And then you get, have to get something that is empty. So this, of course, coincides with the one I just showed you before, when everything is pairwise. It means that everything other than the one between you and me itself is, uh, is uh, zero. 
go back to that. There's a primary case, it's a little simpler. You simply just have to add on interactions. And that, so if you add on interactions uh, that are, for any A, you just add on all interactions up to a certain set, uh, then that has to be zero. So uh, that has been on the other thing. So it's sort of like adding on interactions, so it's not an absolute difference. Each of them, they can actually be negative some of them if you have some of them you can uh, have negative ones that on, on the uh, uh, that smaller kind of energy and uh, that's possible. Okay, let me just return to a small thing that is related to MCQ2 but not the same. And when you submitted the paper, one of the referees said that you wanted a discussion of what's the relation between uh, causal betweenness and uh, this concept of empty. And it's almost the same, but not quite. So, so I just want to, if some of you know about this writing box, causal between them, uh, I thought I'd just sort of put that discussion in here. Uh, so, so essentially, uh, <coughs> writing box has this idea that an event B is causally between two other events. Well, first of all, they have to be condition independent. Uh, that's really what this says. And then they have to have these easily qualities. So, so he wants that C is the best that can happen, cannot happen. So that's important. There has to be uncertainty around it. If you know that A has happened, the probability of C happening is increasing. If you know that B is happening, it's increasing even more. And it still, it remains, it never becomes certain. Okay. And similarly, the other way around, if A is an event that can happen or cannot happen, uh, the probability, if you know that C has happened, then the probability that A goes up, and you know that B has happened, it goes even more up. So B is causing between the two, because knowing that B is happening makes the probability go even higher. That's um, in this book on the direction of time, it goes far back by uh, to 1956. And uh, it's not quite the same as MTV2. Partly because there's nothing in right parts theory that can uh, uh, gets the probability to be strictly positive. Uh, you can see that, that for years an example, if you, if, if you have, uh, if you allow this one to be zero, so this is B, this is B not happening, and A, if you actually say that, that it is possible that to have B not happening and A and C not happening either. So if all the problems, all the things don't happen, if it's possible that none of the three things happen, uh, then, then you get something that is not empty uh, because you get the inequality and, and, and so on. But effectively you have positivity. Uh, and these scope in between them, these entities. So the cause of betweenness implies anti-mutualness. Uh, if you just have strictly positive probability, which is not, uh, is not specified by right but you could very well say that, that, that you want to come to any combination of A, B, and C have positive probability. That's really what it says. Um, and the other way around is almost true as well. If I get this, yeah. Uh, it's the, if you have something that has a strictly positive probability and you have MTB2 and if the dependence graph is this, so instead of this one being true, you have to say this is the dependence graph. So that, that the, uh, instead of this the dependence, you have to say the, this is the dependence graph, and then you know it's faithful, and the faithfulness then implies this. Because if there were one of these inequalities that were not fulfilled, and uh, one of these strict inequalities that were not strict, then you would have uh, that this would not be good. So, so MTQ2-ness is not unrelated to right class uh, causal between-ness, which I found I had to do. There's, it had, UAI has been so much, is one of the places where causality is discovered. Else, so I thought I should take that twist. And I, I think I, without 
having uh, without formalizing this I, in my mind, it is true that that you have these associations that never go away no matter what you do to them. And there is some sort of idea, general idea, that associations of that kind must have a causal explanation. I mean, that's the, that is somehow a, a fundamental part of my upbringing as a statistician. Uh, I don't know whether it's reasonable or not, whether that can be easily formalized or not, but I do uh, think of it in that way in some ways. Okay, what can we say about what that uh, uh, does to structural learning and such thing? Well, I'm working on this with some of my co authors on this paper, the, the original paper, the sixth of the paper, the sub of us is working on this. Uh, and it's not uh, finished, so I can just uh, say that first of all, of course, you would know, you would have things that are always negatively associated. So you would first you would want somehow to make sure that the signs are right. If you just got the signs wrong, I mean, they, things would be negatively associated, and then you could just flop them, and then they become positively associated. So first of all, there is this notion of a sign empty between of course, has the same properties as the MTV2 distribution, say for uh, you have to count how many you know, per, per sign changes on all these statements. Uh, but it does have the uh, faithfulness, for example. Uh, comes over the that. So sign MTV2, if you can actually change the signs of the variables to make it MTV2. Uh, so, so that's one thing. That the MTP2 restriction is convex in the other. But this it says MTP2 is the same as the logarithm of the density being supermodular. That is a convex restriction in the density. Uh, and it means that you can actually use convex optimization to add the MTP2 constraints to any of the other constraints you have that you want to uh, uh, use for you uh, want to optimize the kind of value function or function or whatever. So one particular way would be just to do the sign change bit is first to find the child root tree, which is the, the maximum, the, the best tree approximation to the uh, job distribution that is marked on the tree. Then change the signs starting at the root, choose the root of the gene tree and change the signs from the root to the leaves so that all the associations become positive. And once you've done that, uh, when you've done that, uh, uh, start. And then you've got the right signs, you can forget about the sign up there, and then when you've got that, you can, you can uh, use various types of context optimization methods to uh, quickly that. It is, you automatically get sparseness. Uh, generally, the experience is, and you can also prove that it will happen to some extent, that if correlations are small and negative, then they would be replaced by zero. Because uh, you could sort of say that any, if you know, if you optimize it under MT2 constraint, you would say that if you see any association which is not positive, then it's spurious. So you would just say it's just noise that just then it's over. And I can't say much more than that, uh, but I would say what's the space, I, I would think that this something could happen. And I didn't uh, say about well, all of that, but I won't. So thank you very much.